true, true. Right. Realistically, a lot of the time, like when as I'm coaching people, is people often say they're struggling to connect with their chest, with their lat, and so on and so on. Obviously, I don't PT anymore. And it's it's somewhat some people learn through voice notes, some people can learn through text messages and so on, but a lot of people it's practical. So I want to start putting more of these on to essentially go over your issues, go over what you're struggling with and try and fix that and eradicate it. And we've got Andy into film, so then we'll have that in the portal and go over that. So who are your struggles connecting with their lats? There we go, there we go. Who struggles connecting with their chest? Who struggles biceps, red delts. So there's going to be now, now break it down to like, what's a common exercise you struggle with connecting with the most upper body, just solely up your body today. Uh, red delt fly. Red delt fly. What about yourself, Patch? Uh, probably just like pull down. Like pull down. Dan. Well. Abby. Come on, you know, you, there's got to be something. <laughs> he's he's going to fail with everything now, that's it, it's done. <laughs> what, lat pull down. And fly. fly, right, so dominantly, that's, that's pull, realistically. Upper body, name an exercise you struggle with. Shoulders. Bench. That's because you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> like, like, look at your chest. Your chest is wank. That's like your chest is. You're not struggling to connect with it. Just get rid of the bench. So we're going to do a test initially, right? So a lat pull down. We basically start from around here, right? And then you're pulling down to here. Now, if we look at our shoulder mobility, just do this and see see how far you can get back. Who's struggling to straighten that? And then you get a bit of shoulder cramp here, right? Kim, jump up. Let's come to the front. So go to the side. Let's put your arm like this. So is the tension here? Yeah. Yeah. So realistically, as you're pulling down, you're pulling down here, and you're going to bias a lot more of that rear delt. So when we think about the lat, the lat inserts into here. So really, we want to be at this angle. But no lap machine, lap pull down machine is biased like that because you're literally going to be pulling to there. So you need to be more offset into here. We'll go more into it over that. Who struggles with shoulder press? Who said that? Shoulders, come over here. So do you, do you struggle with this kind of rotation? Yeah, yeah, towards the back side. Just, just put your arm up to the side. So then he is tension. Dominantly, from a posterior point, just stand to the side for me. Can you see how Kaleem kind of rolls here? There's no way of him fixing that, like even if he pinned his shoulder blades back. So as he's struggling here, we need to bias that bench to more, to align that. Right, who was it that rear dealt? Jump over here. I want you to think with this, you're gonna do it single arm. I almost treat this like you would the machine and show me what you do. So like, whereabouts are you feeling it now? Uh, rotate the cuff. Anyway. So rotate the cuff. So like, if we now go here, higher, not from there, from the elbow, yeah. right? Come back in. And now I want you to forget, forget about here. You're just gonna move with the elbow. And you're gonna think about bringing your elbow to my head, so as far out as you can. You feel it more. Yeah. So realistically, like, when we set up a machine from a rear delt point, we're commonly here, aren't we? like your rear delt again from the back and I'm, this is a good this is almost a good connection because if we look from just stand to that side for me figure do a pull down so when we're doing a pull down we're commonly going to train that rear delt can you see how we're there so if he does a rear delt and he's up here he's going to get it more so we're going to go downstairs and we're going to start with lat pull down initially and then we're going to go into other exercises got me after you I've chosen this because of how the axis goes is we're actually pulling into where the lat is. As essentially we're gonna be, if we adjust it, we're gonna be here. 
And can you see why now I'm in front of it? As opposed to a pull down would be here. Now, what this is allowing me to do, if my shoulders are staying down, I'm able to drive my elbow down. So I can take my elbow to where the lat inserts as such. So jump on here for me. Before you do that, Mark, how would you set the chair up? So realistically, just just take a seat. So say that Kim here has to reach for that. We don't want this weight stack here from the start. So she wants to be high enough to where this isn't starting and she's able to lock in with the pad. So I'd, for, for her, just grab that again. Can you see how like she can just grab it without getting the seat back? But here now, as she gets to the bottom part, this is gonna allow her to be stronger in this end range. And as she comes here, she's gonna be weaker here. No, sorry, that's wrong. She's gonna be stronger here and weaker here. But as she gets to this point, this weight's now here. But if she had that seat any higher, just relax, let go of this. If she had that seat any higher, she'd be here and that drop off wouldn't actually be there. So you almost want the seat, depending on your limb length from your arm, in a position where you've actually almost got to get up to grab it. Um, it's it's gonna be very person dependent as well on your, your tibia, because you wanna be able to firmly place your feet on the floor and lock in. So we're gonna grab this, I'm gonna put a bit of weight on. How does that feel? So can you see how Kim's elbow is going all the way down and back? So like this is where like, a, just relax. This is where it's a common misconstrued, where we're thinking about full range of motion. Like if just put your hand in there for me and cut my fist. Hmm? Go, go like that, oh. yep. So now drop your shoulder blade. And what I want Kim to be thinking of is taking this tricep into her body, so she's gonna think, tr forgetting, forgetting her grip, forgetting her forearm, just gonna be thinking elbow and tricep into here, so pull down. Can you feel here? Mm -hmm. So she's now forgot about elbow back. She's just thinking tricep. So I'll use this commonly as a cue because then we're completely forgetting about thinking back. We're commonly forgetting about where that hand position is. Like your hand essentially is just a hook. So if we now just think, tricep, 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 tricep in. We're not gonna get all the way back here. And the minute she does, just go again, do it how you did it initially. Mm -hmm. Watch her shoulder blade. Can you see how her shoulders kind of rotate? Now do it, come to the top. Now think about your tricep and your elbow. Can you see how her shoulder now stays in place? Go again. So think elbow and shoulder, there, good. Think this time for me on this cue. Mm -hmm. Before you come down, just drop your scapula down. There you go. And now think elbow into here. There you go. Can you feel all here? Mm -hmm. Good, go again. Can you see how you didn't have to take your elbow all the way back? Yeah. Good, just relax. Does anyone else want to give that a go? So, perfect. So Adam here, you can see, has noticeably got a much longer arm than Kim. So this might actually affect the setup. So if he grabs it, and he starts now, now pull down. But straight away he's got a larger range of motion. So now just relax. So what happens here is there's no point in changing the position of the seat up and down. For him, we're gonna need to kind of sit back further. So this is where machine, this machine realistically could have had an adjustable chest pad to force him back. So I want you to go back, keep going further back. Good, now grab this arm for me force that against there, place your chest. So we've created about a four inch gap. That's about right in it, ladies, come on. Four, four inch, grab this, <laughs> grab this for me. So now what Adam's gonna be thinking of is keeping that chest up. He's gonna be breathing into his rib cage. So this, he literally inhaled everything. And now he's gonna drive this shoulder down and then he's thinking tricep into his hip. There, can you feel here? Good. And then as he comes back up, and this is another one for you, Kim, is we're not thinking up, we're thinking out, because the machine is actually going into this range. Now drive back down. Good. Go again. Good. So can you see how straight away here, can you see how his shoulder elevates? Before he comes down, I want him to depress this, so drop, the, there you go. So otherwise, what you're gonna do is place a large emphasis on your traps. 
So can you remember when you like first went to, right, Kim, you know when you first came to this gym, did you used to think there was a lot of guys that walked around like this, <laughs> right? And essentially, majority of that is, is gonna be the, the, the trap and rare uh, del active, sorry. They've created a large muscularity on that upper back because everything they've done, even from like this machine, is they've just pulled elbows back. So they've just trained a shit ton of that rear back. Apart from being an egotistical prick and wanting to walk like this, a lot of it's going to be that they've just put all of this up. Who wants to see Adam work through a working set? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Literally, forget everyone's in this room. If you grunt, smile, whatever, whatever like your whatever noises you make during a set, just let them out. Mm -hmm. What I want you to think about is everything we've just gone over. So you're going to place as much pressure against this pad as you can. Yep. We're going to lock your knees in. Is that going to longer? Absolutely. And then I want you to literally grip this one, place that shoulder down. So in the cues, we're going to think here again, is we're going to go tricep down. And then on the way up, we're going to go elbow forward. We're going to have to give um, Adam a little bit of a, like, yeah, screaming here. Come on, <laughs> let's go. Good. Think slow, think slow, think slow, good. And then when you're coming down, that tricep into the body. Good, keep it close to the body. Good, go again. Good tempo here, good tempo. Go again. Come on. Shoulder down. Come on people, give them a bit of credit, come on. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> drive down, drive down. Good, good. There's more there, there's more there. Get this lat short for me, shoulder down, there you go. Good, two with me, big deep breath in. Good, good, pull down. Tricep, 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 tricep. Again with me, again with me, again with me, again with me, again with me. Yes, set the standard now, set the standard. So like, you see how his form's getting a little bit like, Rapid here. I'm still going to take him for another. Go again. <laughs> now, here, just think about moving it. Think about moving it. Your body will take it. Your body will take it. Go right, on. done. So, like, realistically, again, when we look at training intensity, right, there's, there's going to be a high level of this form and then there's intensity, right? If all we give a fuck about is making sure our mind can feel the muscle and, and we're with perfect form, you're not going to grow. You're not going to take your body to where you want it to be. But also with the element, we don't want to go all out intensity because you're probably going to tear your knees to bits, you're going to rip your elbows to bits, and you're going to injure yourself. How would you manage that? Though? Like if you give me an eight to 12 rep range to fail, it, yes. I, I, how, how would I pick the weight and how would I manage that moving forward? Is that where you want the clips? That's where I want the clips. And essentially like for yourself is, you know, you know in the, the time frame that you've been training essentially, for like let's say we'll talk about yourself for one, You've, you've commonly had injuries that you're, you're probably kind of in here going to go, I'm not taking that rep. So if you get to, let's say that you're at the top of a squat, right, ask yourself, right, 50-50, where is this going to end? And if it is 50-50, I would commonly rack it. Now, in a machine or something like this, if it's 50-50, I'm going to probably take it because I've got the support of this machine and I can literally just let my hand go. Now, let's say, for example, you've been training, you're in the first year or two of training, right? Like, you need accuracy, you need to learn like thing. But like, from this point is, people are going to think that this needs to move at a certain pace throughout. And then we just saw Adam where he was in those last reps, that kind of concentric because he was moving down and actually contracting, was that rep probably took him six seconds in that phase, where a lot of people would go, shit, no but you're still putting as much power output into that rep as you was when it was taking two seconds to move. It's just now that tissue's fatigue. So as long as- For a newbie, how would you sort of pick your way? Would you just rely on? I don't, I'd almost think so like, say we're warming up for this. We'll go through the warm up procedure. So let's say the rep range is eight to 12. I'd, I'd probably go, right, I'm gonna put five kilo on. I'm gonna say that this person can move 50 kilo for eight here. Right, I'm gonna put five kilo on, I'm gonna do six reps, right. I know this movement feels right, I've got no niggles in my shoulder, everything feels locked in. I'm now gonna increase that to 15 kilo. I'm gonna do two reps, I'm gonna to go to 25. 
These warm up reps, would you still maintain the tempo that you set on the plane? Yeah, yeah, because you're almost like, you want that to be absolute key. I.e., if I was to do, let's say, deadlift, and I use straps, which I do, is I'd be strapping up on just the bar, yeah. because I want my body to get used to that. So I don't want to be... That's from, from, from every warm up to every rep, but then obviously as you're fatiguing within that set, you may just need to accept that that concentric is now gonna take you five seconds because of fatigue. And that would be where a lot of people rack the weight. And I need to be very careful on what I say here because I don't want somebody loading the bar up tomorrow on a bench press, thinking that this 15 second eccentric isn't gonna fuck my shoulders up. Um, but right, we're gonna do one more on here. I want one more volunteer. Um, Patch, come on. Busted. So like. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right. So I'm gonna give you cues in your head for tempo, and I want you to essentially now go for a, your traditional warm up. We're gonna, let, we're gonna let Patch kind of go through his, his normal theory of how he does it, and I'm gonna correct him. Okay. What's no. Single arm? Single arm. Do dual arm, actually. No, no, it's not, it's terrible. It's a piece of shit for dual arm. Um, do single arm. You're, you're gonna do, your working set's gonna be between six to eight reps. Your tempo is, I want one second down, second pause in the hole, three seconds up, pause at the top, Again, so it's three one one. Okay. So just think about again, go to the top, sorry. Now I want you to think here, I want shoulder down, and I want elbow and tricep going into here. Good. Now I want you to think about this wrist going towards that mirror. Good. So like Patch is now kind of almost, he's gonna do four reps or so here. Just getting a feel for the movement and that like load he's got on. Good, relax. And now he's gonna be conscious of knowing that that rep range is between six to eight. So how did that feel? How much would you put on? Another 20. Another 20? He's making you look like a boy here. So, let's go. So this is, this is gonna be his second warm up. So I, I realistically want him doing two reps within that tempo. So you can see here that form isn't broke down, so you can easily manage this load. Good, relax. So now, to, to prolong things realistically, like we can see that he's got more, but has he got more to put a 20 on? I'd argue say no. What would you agree? agree? Yeah. So now if we then put a 20 on, he's, there's no way he's gonna, he's gonna be able to work. So this is where at that point where you're gonna go, right, okay, I'm gonna do another feeder, I'm gonna do another warm up with five kilo on. Um, we got five kilo. There's one there. So here, when we get to these stages of work being more towards that working set, there's gonna be no reward in doing two to three reps. So if he now literally just gets himself locked in and thinks, right, I'm just gonna do one rep, and now that's gonna give him the ability to feel that weight. You're gonna give your body like acknowledgement that you can handle this load. And you're not wasting too much energy going into that top set where you're gonna do six to eight. Give me one rep. Good. And relax. So like you may almost get, you may have in that set then, you might have done that rep and gone, holy fucking shit, this is my six to eight. Then you've got to think, right, am I locked in? Yeah, let's go for six now or eight. Or you may think, this is my set, let me actually get my head right into it. You're gonna drop it and go back into it. What would you say weight was? I'd say five. Perfect. Five 
So it's Cherry's favourite track. What is it? Aqua Barbagale? Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Cherry's favourite track is ready. He's going to take this for six to eight. And, and let's say now that he gets eight plus, let's say he gets ten. All he knows then from a logbook point is next session he could probably put an extra two and a half on if everything between this and that session from a recovery point is good. He may come into it absolutely dog shit battered and there's no point in chasing that number. He may as well just accurately keep within, maintain that number and just get better reps. All right, let's go. Shoulder. There you go, good. And can you see from a, a, a spotter point, I'm not standing here counting one, two, three. But you don't need that shit. Go again. Good. Now this is where his, his reps are breaking down, so he definitely needs a spot. He needs to be conscious of pushing that elbow down, shoulder down. Good, good. Go again. Shoulder down. Drag. And I'm literally, I'm not applying much here. I'm just giving him a little bit of a placebo in his head that I'm here. Good. And one more. Drag. There you go, done. So like, the reason I'd have him attempt that rep, because that partial is gonna have more reward than just going, done. Now, if you're spotting someone, what's a good thing to take away from that is, who here gets fed up with somebody in your here going one, two, three. We're not at fucking nursery, are we? We're in the gym, right? Realistically, what are you doing in your head as you're doing those reps? You're counting, aren't you? And what are you forgetting in those sets? Cues. You're forgetting elbow down. You're literally, in your mind, you've probably got six to beat from last week. So you're forgetting form and you're just thinking, one, oh, three more, three more, come on, two. But he's already counting. Where really that, that spotter's job would be better going, come on, mate, shoulder down. Think about it, think about it, and giving you little cues on what you're probably taking your mind away from like things that are going to cause create stability so what's great with this piece of kit is these are locked down you've got something to suppress yourself against here this is just going to move in one fashion now if we was to do a pull-up which again like as a female how many people here want to do um, a pull-up no but th <laughs> this one on like but like but commonly you you want to be able to pull up your body weight now you imagine the momentum you've got to give within that movement and it's like, what's the reward in it? It's just to say I pulled myself up. Um, we're gonna go over to the cable stack now and we're gonna do this in a different way because that is gonna be something that every gym has. Last Cheers, man. So like, you've got to play around. Again, that's a, that's a very good question. You've got to play around with it. Like I would, for me, I'm very much like, and you'll know this in just um, one, one thing before we go, people. So in everyone's plan, and I know it because I'll literally, I'm anal against it, is I want neutral grip. So I'll dominantly have neutral grip in. Now, there's very rare times that there's machines that will give us underhand. But like, when we think about overhand, all we're, all we're commonly going to train is our biceps because we're in this motion. So if we can send that elbow forward and we've got either neutral or underhand, we're there. But like, Ooh, here, just turn your palm facing up, all the way up. Has anyone got any tension in the outside of their forearm? Keep turning your little finger that way. You got tension? So like, so that realistically is, is an injury risk. I'd argue it to some degree, because it's very person dependent. Now do this. No, no issues with your wrist, right? So like commonly I would always say neutral grip on a pull down, because if we're here, we can pull down. Well, now, I would, I would, I would take the front just simply because if I'm doing this single arm, it's harder for me to kind of get this down. It sends me closer, and commonly for people, they're going to be out of that shoulder whip, so they're almost pulling here. Where if I can be here again, I'm more central to that front part. Right, go to the pull down. I'll just put this back to where it was. Is all right? Yeah, 